This is the Bill Press Show. Welcome back to the Bill Press Show. We've been chatting here in studio with Sarah K. Ellis, who's the president and CEO of GLAD. You can follow her on Twitter at Sarah K. Ellis, and you can go check out their work online at GLAD.org, obviously one of the leading advocacy groups for LGBTQ individuals. And they have launched, as we were talking about before the break, the Trump Accountability Project, seeking to hold accountable the president-elect and those that he will surround himself with as he takes office on January 20th in terms of the record on LGBTQ rights. Um, Sarah Kate, you know, at this at the federal level um, or just nationally in terms of the con- the discourse around uh, the LGBTQ community over the last few years, we, we've seen a lot of strides. Um, the, the, the landmark mm-hmm. ruling, of course, uh, at the Supreme Court declaring same-sex marriage as a constitutional right being one of the the, the biggest uh, accomplishments. But at the state level, I mean, in part because of those strides, mm-hmm. you've seen a lot of pushback and the majority of the states in this country are controlled by Republican legislatures and governors. Uh, and one of the pieces that we were discussing is the so-called religious freedom mm-hmm. laws um, to just e- enable discrimination uh, against LGBTQ customers. We have Republican control of Congress now. Uh, that was another... We already did. I mean, Mm -hmm. this election reaffirmed their majorities in the House and the Senate. Are you seeing indications or what what might you think that that might mean for some of the state level measures now potentially at the federal level? So um, last year we saw almost around 100 anti LGBT bills at the state level. This year, we're projecting that we're going to see a 20 to 30 percent lift in that. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, last year, we didn't see many pass, right? And one of the most widely known ones that did pass was the North Carolina um, bill. Um, The bathroom bill. The bathroom Mm -hmm. bill, which which got a tremendous amount of backlash. The state has lost a tremendous amount of money, including the governor switched over now to Roy Cooper as, as a result of that or... Um, seemingly so. Um, so uh, I am concerned this year that we're going, not only do we know that we're going to see more of them, but I do feel that op- that that people feel more emboldened who are anti-LGBT um, than ever before because of the rhetoric of hate and bias that has been being spewed across the country um, from the from the president-elect. Um, so I, I, it is concerning. These so-called religious freedom bills um, are just that. They're so-called. They're not religious freedom bills. Um, people, people's religious freedom is protected under the First Amendment. Mm-hmm. Nobody's calling that into question. That's never been called into question. What it does is that if you're a public, if you offer a public service, then you need to serve whoever comes into your to your. Uh, into your establishment. Um, and this has real serious ramifications when you get into the medical industry as well, because if somebody's having a life threatening ordeal and somebody wants to deny them, um, you know, help simply because they're gay, it's really dangerous territory that we're getting into. Um, so yeah, I do think we are going to see more this year. Um, and I think that they're going to be, um, even stronger in terms of um, being discriminatory and that I, we're going to see more pass this year than we've ever seen before. So how do you organize? I mean, how, how, that, that's, that's what the, I think, reaction is from opponents of the, of the, the next administration is not just to um, survive the next four mm-hmm. years, potentially, eight weeks, but, but to organize. And how does your group go about doing that? So we are fortunate within the LGBT community to have a number of organizations. We handle the media part of it. Um, We're, you know, as you had mentioned earlier, we're about, we're a 30-year-old organization. We really focus on media coverage and Hollywood um, depictions of LGBT people. So um, we focus on getting people in front of the camera in um, smaller s- towns and cities in front of local press to tell their stories of being LGBTQ. We know that once you know someone who's LGBTQ, you're more likely 
to be kinder and nicer and have a deeper understanding. It's, you know, we always say anyone, you can't hate someone whose story you know. And so um, we really organize at the local level to get people in front of the camera to tell their, so everyday people to tell their stories. I am somewhat curious because that's a great point is a big component um, of this is Hollywood uh, and, and there's a lot of advocacy on the part of Hollywood in favor of the LGBTQ community. You're starting to see a lot more depiction on television mm -hmm. of, of the issues they face. Orange is the New Black is a good example. Um, you know, having not just the, but having, you know, questions about transgender treatment in prison. And we're, we're really, you know, modern family, of course, for many people mm -hmm. is, you know, a household show. Um, Donald Trump is a celebrity. He's someone who's very obs obsessed with image. And he's also a businessman, and you know one of the issues Mike Pence faced was the backlash from the mm -hmm. from the business community. So I'm kind of curious how you think that might inform um, decisions he makes with res because because he's someone who's very thin skin, and I, I do wonder if he's going to want to face the backlash if he were to try and tamper with LGBTQ rights in this country. I uh, you know I am very concerned at the state level. I think that the North Carolina election for governor, um, having Cooper win that, Roy Cooper win that, um, was, did send a mandate that if you, you know, if you discriminate, if you try to write in legislation that discriminates, or you do in this case, that there's going to be a reaction and response to that. And the business community, you know, there's, it, it appears that they've lost millions and millions and millions of dollars because of that discriminatory bill. And in addition to that, they also lost their governor because he insisted on in the dark of the night signing in a, in a discrimination bill. We're going to see these bills all over the country popping up. And I think that um, what what's really important from our perspective is to educate about these bills, especially these 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 bathroom bills. Yeah. Um, Transgender people have been going to the bathroom at the, in the at the gender that they you know dis, that they us uh, that they are um, that they the word I'm losing that they feel mm -hmm. since for a very very long right. time <laughs> without incident right so it's very curious how this became an issue when it was never an issue. Um, and I think that that in and of itself is a really interesting. Mm -hmm. Does the does the media, in your view, adopt the appropriate framing around this legislation? Have you seen improvement in, in just I've how the media covers what these bills really are, what they actually are seeking to do? Yeah. Um, when this started, we were taken by surprise, honestly. Um, we as GLAD and, and the movement itself. And so it started in Houston, and it was about a year ago this time where this first one popped up, and they had this really creepy ad of, um, that they ran, that the people who were pushing this bill forward ran, um, and it was a very scary ad. And so um, it, we didn't realize that this narrative was about to pop up and this was going to become an issue because it hadn't been an issue. There was no inciting in, in, um, incident that started uh, this, uh. right? Um, and so, but since then, we have created at GLAD a the bathroom bill um, myth. Mm. And we created a journalist guide to inform them and educate them on that this information because when it did pop up in Houston, so many people didn't even know about it that they were just reporting what they were told and mm -hmm. they weren't pushing back on it. And so we did create materials around that so to educate people 